Hey YA nerds, it's Kay here and I like to read a lot. I'm trying out a new thing where I say my YouTube handle, why not? Um, so I'm here for another week of reviewing books with you guys. Uh, this week we're going to talk about a book that has heavy Japanese influences, which is why I'm wearing my Kodama earrings from Princess Mononoke, Studio Ghibli, uh, Hayao Miyazaki, and I'm also wearing my Necomancer, uh, Necomancer sweatshirt, which I got from Wicked Clothing. Um, cool brand, uh, not sponsored. Wish I was sponsored, not really. Um, so uh, I'm kind of keeping with like the theme clothes thing while I talk about books. I don't know, something fun to do while I have nothing else to do. So here we are. Uh, so this week we are talking about Seven Deadly Shadows, and it's by Courtney Alameda and Valine E. Maitani. I had to look at that to read it because I can never remember names. I'm so bad with them. Sorry for the glare. But like, how cool is this book cover? Um, it caught my attention right away. We got it in at the library. Uh, I processed it like I always do. And from there, I was kind of like, want to read this book? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, as for the details of the book, it was published this past January, uh, January 28th to be specific, 2020, and it is 359 pages. Uh, we got it in like March at my library. So sometimes that happens with libraries, they get books like a little bit later, just depending on like the budget. So, um, but we did get it this year and that's the book. <laughs> So the plot of Seven Deadly Shadows, we follow Akira Fujikawa, uh, who is a Miko. She is a shrine maiden at her family shrine. The shrine has been passed down by generations, and she is kind of like the next heir of the shrine. Um, she can see yokai, which are demons, in Japan. Uh, the whole book takes place wholly in Japan, um, which is also what caught my attention about it. And basically what happens is one night her shrine is attacked and uh, her grandfather is killed. Not a spoiler, it happens in like the first two chapters. And she has to go on a mission to gather seven Shinigami death gods so that um, she can save her family's legacy and her shrine and the world. Um, so it sets up kind of like an anime, um, at least in my opinion, where you like, this is the chosen one and they have to go on like a journey, a hero's journey. Uh, to defeat this great evil and save the world. It, it reads, like, it feels a little bit like Sailor Moon, um, kind of, but, like, with more fox magic. Uh, yeah, so. It was, it's pretty interesting. It, that's what really grabbed me with the plot. I was like, oh, cool, I've never read a book that took place, actually, that's not true. I read a book last year that took place in Japan, but I've never read a book that took place in Japan that dealt with, like, folklore in such a heavy way. Um, I'm sure that there are more out there, but this is the first that I've really seen. As for the tropes of this, uh, a lot of the tropes for this book specifically line up also with uh, shoujo anime. Um, so we have like broken family units, uh, the chosen one, which I mentioned before, clueless adults, clumsy female protagonist, uh, straight as an arrow, undiscovered powers, and youth is in danger. Uh, and again, this list uh, is like 38 tropes that I am still tweaking sometimes. Um, came up with them several years ago by talking to a bunch of librarians and also readers and just finding them online. Uh, some of them are based off of tropes that were movie tropes that can apply to books. Um, some of them are just things that I've noticed in books, like, you know, the chosen one is such a heavy used trope. Um, and even like uh, the clumsy female protagonist we saw a lot of in the early 2000s. Um, Twilight is a big example of the clumsy female protagonist. So uh, that's how I came up with all of those. Um, if you want to talk about the tropes, you feel free to like comment on a video or just message me directly and we can talk about it. If you have a better idea or if there's a trope that I haven't talked about that you think belongs on the list, tell me. Um, also, as usual, I will put the descriptions of the tropes down in the description below. And you can see what I'm talking about when I say these random crazy words. So 
So for the read-alikes for this, uh, again, I take read-alikes from two different websites, one from Goodreads and one from Novelist. I'm sorry, two from Goodreads and two from Novelist. Uh, Goodreads is owned by Amazon. Uh, I use them to keep track of my reading progress. In fact, there's a link below. You can follow me on Goodreads if you'd like, see what I'm reading. I don't usually review on Goodreads just because um, I don't like reviewing in five stars. I know that sounds so weird. Um, and also they're like, they don't really have a good platform for video uh, reviews like I do, so I just review them here on YouTube, and uh, I could, I guess, post a link to my review, but it requires going back and editing. It doesn't matter. So their recommendations are based on algorithms, um, what you've read in the past, what you should read in the future. Um, I don't know if that affects the recommendations they give you when you're looking at a book specifically. It might, it might not, um, so that's how Goodreads works. Novelist is a completely different animal. Uh, Novelist is a database that's um, run by a bunch of information professionals and librarians. Um, it is hosted by EBSCO. I'm not sure who owns it. I, I should really look into that. Um, you can access Novelist usually through your library's website because a lot of libraries will purchase a subscription to the database so you can go explore it that way. I prefer Novelist because, um, as I've said in other videos, you can kind of set what parameters you want in order to find the book that that you want to read. You can also look up your favorite books and like see what's recommended based off of like the thing, the criteria that your favorite book follows. So like if you like books about the chosen one, um, you know, Harry Potter, The Hunger Games, anything with like a protagonist that has to save the world, um, you could type all that in and it would come up for you. Uh, so it's a really interesting service and I a service that a lot of librarians use when they have to recommend books, myself included. So for Goodreads, we have Blood Countess by Lana Popovic. Uh, I haven't read this book. I know nothing about it. Sorry. <laughs> I also have Beyond the Shad Shadowed Earth by Joanna Ruth Mayer. Also haven't read anything about it. Sorry. I think both covers of those books look really interesting. I'm pretty sure they both have female main characters who are chosen ones. Other than that, uh, Novelist gave us Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I know Julie Kagawa. I'm probably saying her name wrong. I'm so sorry. Uh, she's a very prolific um, author who writes a lot of stories that focus on like Asian folklore. I think specifically Japanese folklore, but I also have not read any of her work, so I could be wrong, and that's okay. Um, but I know that like my library has like 20 of her books. If she's written 20 books, they have all of them. <laughs> uh, so I know, I know that this book has something to do with, at least I think this book has something to do with like a shadow spirit and a female protagonist magic, something like that, a little folklore. So I could see how the, this book and seven deadly shadows can line up. Uh, and then we also have wicked Fox by Kat Cho. Um, I don't know anything about this book either. I'm assuming by the title, um, another folklore-ish fox spirit thing similar to Seven Deadly Shadows. Uh, so you could see how either of these websites would recommend this these books based on Seven Deadly Shadows. A Goodreads gives us like, you know, female protagonist, world in danger, save the world, whereas novelists will give us more like the cultural side of it. So my rating for this book is not a 10 out of 10. I hated this book. Uh, I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. So I... This is so hard. I hate dissing books because like, A, they're really hard to write. B, I know authors, like that job is impossible. <laughs> and C, like... I'm not a professional book reviewer. What the hell do I have to say about books? Like, so anytime I review a book poorly, or even like if, when I give a, a book a high rating, it's purely my opinion and I have like no, what's the word, stake in anything. If you like books like this, I highly recommend reading it because it was very interesting. However, uh, I kind of hated it. So um, I appreciate the Japanese folklore in this book. Um, I am white, <laughs> but I've been into Japanese uh, 
culture since I was like 14. You know, anime started becoming a really big thing around that time. I was super into it. I still am super into it. I still watch and read a ton of anime and manga. Um, my shelves are f overflowing with manga. It is insane. And I've been collecting manga since I was 12 or 13. Um, so I've been into all of this since around that time. So like a really long time. Um, and like, I, I think 14 year old me or 15 year old me would have loved this book. I would have eaten it up because it reads like an anime. You know, every chapter is like an episode of an anime where like Kira gets in trouble. Kira has to like train to fight big thing, bad thing happen. And oh no, a bad thing happened. And now Kira needs to fight bad thing and survive. But the problem I really have with this is that it, the book sets up every encounter she has with the demon as a life or death situation and then she never resolves it. It's one thing for her to be like a teenager and therefore not powerful but at one point she has powers and then doesn't use them. And it's like why give her powers if you're not going to use them to have her solve her problems? She never solves her own problem until the end and I guess you could consider that a turning point and yeah that makes it a good story whatever but like she's constantly being saved by other people constantly being saved by other people she never in the entire story I mean aside from the last big encounter which she only succeeds in doing because she's hurt emotionally and like the big baddie does something unjustifiable and like I'm like you know maybe it's just that I'm old like, I just didn't like it. I, you know, it, there was a lot of deus ex machina in this book. Fancy term for, like, God swoops in and saves everything and fixes everything. And so, like, it was a lot of, like, well, the stakes didn't matter. Like, this, none of, nothing mattered by the end of the book. So, it was, this book was a lot of me thinking in my head, like, why did I just read 360 pages of nothing happening? Which... I can also attribute to some anime that I've watched. Why did I just waste my time on 52 episodes of an anime? Like, it's all the same. It's all the same. Um, I also am kind of curious if there's going to be a sequel to this book because um, the ending, like, felt like a closed ending, but also felt like the kind of ending where, like, if the book sold well and the authors were approached by making to make a sequel, like, it could happen... I don't want that. I am so tired of trilogies. <laughs> this this industry is just chock full of series. And they can be really great at, when they're done well. But if the first book's not great, the other two are not going to be great either. But that's just my opinion. Opinions are not fact. And if you love this book, I I'm sorry. Uh, you can try to convince me why it's good. Leave me a comment. Let me know. I hated it. Uh, I only finished it so I could review it. And honestly, I skipped the last, like, six chapters. I read the last two chapters. And I knew exactly... I, I wasn't lost. So that tells you a lot. Wow. I'm, I'm being really mean in this review. I don't like that. <laughs> uh, I am reading a book right now that I'm really excited to talk to you all about. I'll uh, probably finish it this weekend and then um, get on it. We'll see. Um, with everything going on, it's still hard to read sometimes, but we're plodding through. So, uh, that's the end of this. I hope you all are doing fine. Again, uh, keeping yourselves sane, uh, reading if you can, not reading if you can't. And, uh, I hope, you know, take care and I'll see you guys next week. Peace out, YA nerds.